Inside this box is a Build-A-Bear. I mean, not a Build-A-Bear, a Build-A-Game Boy Color. Today, we're gonna see how easy it is to build our own Game Boy Color in 2024. That's right, Mobile Gamers. So what you see here is everything, well, at least I thought everything that you need to build your own Game Boy Color in 2024. This is literally the most awesome thing that you could buy for under $150. That was Canadian for your collection or playing Game Boy Color again to relive your childhood dreams. Now I say that I thought I bought everything because I forgot to get a power switch. And you will see me kind of complain about that. Well, I didn't really complain, but I kind of questioned it. As I was pulling things out, I didn't realize that the button kit that I bought didn't come with a power switch. So if you buy one of these kits, I will put everything in the description below that you should get to make sure that you get everything you need because I bought customized awesome buttons. And as you can see, I'm looking through the box, trying to figure out if I ended up getting everything I needed. So I decided to do this a little bit different rather than a long video showing me put this thing together. I'm just gonna kind of share with you my experience of everything that I experienced when doing this. It was a really easy thing to put together for anybody, even my kids could probably do it. Now, I highly recommend you to get a kit like this because it doesn't come with any tools. You could order tools from them, but I highly recommend you just to buy a toolkit just like this one as it has a lot of bits. It has the screwdriver, it has a lot of other tools. I just grabbed everything that I thought I would need for this so that I would have everything prepped and ready to go. You do need a tri-wing screwdriver bit. You also need a Phillips screwdriver bit. They did include tri-wing screws for you. And I just wanted to crack right into the case just to see the shell and everything because I got a nice looking purple, transparent purple case. They give you some stickers here. Well, a sticker here and a business card and a little baggie of screws. The paper that you're seeing here is just my order number. And as you can see, these buttons look really, really cool. And they look really good once they are actually placed inside. You also need to get the membranes. So the start and select button and the actual uh, contact pads. So make sure of that. And again, as you can see, the buttons don't come with a power switch. And I found out the hard way. So I ended up ordering another kit. And I also ordered a power switch with it. Well, I ordered the buttons with the power switch. So after I cracked into all this, I just looked at everything, made sure everything was there. We do have the IR sensor uh, cover at the top and all the screws. And yes, the screws do come with the six tri-wing screws on the back. And then there's three Phillips screws that go in the middle I or in on the actual board. Don't put the third screw in the center because I guess it causes issues. And when I show you the part where I actually put this all together, we will see all this happening. So right here, I started off with pulling out the screen. Be very careful when you pull your screen out. It does have a cover on it. So it's very easy to actually put this inside the shell as long as you buy the shell. All you have to do is prop the bottom piece right into the bottom of the actual slot where the screen goes. Now there's some 3M tape adhesive that I ended up peeling off so that this will stick right down. And I went right ahead and just installed that so that it was stuck right to the actual shell itself to make it a lot easier for the installation process when we get to the actual board. Now that's what I did here is pulled the board out and took a look at it. And it's literally a full all in one board to get you ready to go in no time. This whole process took me about 30 minutes because I didn't watch a tutorial or anything. I just kind of winged it based off of looking at everything. And as you can see, this board looks super clean. It's labeled with Funny Plane, as it is by Funny Plane. It's not by Retro Game Repair Shop. That's just the company that I purchased it from. The shipping was super fast, honestly, and I was actually impressed when it showed up. So I, like I said, ordered another one, 
and I highly recommend to make sure that you get all the parts that I'm gonna tell you what to get in here. Now, right here, I was kind of showing what we would have to do, but I flipped it over and kind of took a look at this. And yeah, right here is where we actually place the ribbon cable. Now, I didn't place this in here just yet, but the ribbon cable that you see on the back is going to be slid right into the one slot on the board. But what I did first was actually took off the 3M tape cover with some tweezers just to peel that off nicely so that I didn't wreck anything and stuck it down to my shell. So for the speaker, there's a little rubber kind of circular insert that you can just place in the speaker slot that holds down the speaker so that it doesn't fall out because the speaker is a little bit smaller and it makes it look a little bit more classy from the front side. You don't really see it that much, but that's how the speaker just sits it right in there. And again, this isn't really a tutorial per se. I'm gonna do a tutorial about how to put this together when my other one comes so that you guys can see it. Whereas this is just kind of my experience of how everything was put together. So there is a tab here to actually put that ribbon cable on. And yes, you do just slide it right in there. Now it doesn't go in on this side. I was looking at this and I'm like, okay, maybe it doesn't go on this side. And you actually have to flip the board over and it goes in on the white side on this side that I'm looking at right now. So yes, you have to flip this over and slide that right in and then push that push tab back down. Now, I kept on trying here. I don't know why. <laughs> I just kept on trying to do this. And I was like, okay, hey, maybe not. Maybe this does go in that side. Usually, um, ribbon cables go in a certain way. But yes, this ribbon cable just slides right into that white slot right there. And then you have to pull that tab down to make sure that it actually goes in. I highly recommend you to test all this first. So you can technically put everything all together and put the battery in place and check it out. But again, this isn't really a tutorial. This is kind of my first experience sharing how this thing was put together and how I just kind of winged it. And again, I thought about, okay, maybe take this ribbon cable off, but no, I'm not gonna take that off. I decided I'm just gonna try to get this slid right in there because after you get that in there, it's kind of all uphill from here as you just slide that tab in there and you can see I kind of figured it out where I could just slide it in and there it goes. No, uh, no, no, yep, no, yep, okay. You will feel that <laughs> it does just feel like it's in there nicely and make sure it's straight. What I mean is make sure that that ribbon cable looks like it feels like it's straight when it's in, if you've never done anything like this before. And again, I'm gonna share like an actual guide about this, but I decided to do a voiceover, kind of just sharing my experience rather than doing anything because I didn't do anything like this before. And it is actually a lot simpler once you've done it once, at least to me and anybody that's not experienced with this kind of stuff. But you should get a toolkit, get a rubber mat like this and put something like this together for yourself. So yeah, the rest of this was pretty much uphill from here. I put all the screws down, checked everything, made sure all the buttons were kind of placed in place, make sure all the, the ribbon cables and everything were seated properly. And the only problem I had was this speaker. Uh, it is easy to put in and even the battery, it was kind of a bugger to actually figure out which way to put this in. And I kind of fixed that near the end of this, but it is really awesome to see this thing turn on. And then I struggled here to try to find the power switch that I forgot to order. So I was like, okay, it's not here, whatever. I'm just gonna have to turn this on using a screwdriver or my fingernail, which is what I did just to test it out. Now, when it comes to putting the battery cable on, you have to make sure it goes one certain way. There are prongs you'll be able to see when you put the battery cable into the actual board. But again, not a tutorial, just my experience on how this thing turned out. Now, once I had this thing all together and I was fiddling around with stuff for a bit, I did figure out that I needed to update the firmware, which was pretty easy to do. If you go on their website, they will tell you how to do that. And it looks like my battery was kind of dead. It is really cool the fact that we can actually just charge this with a USB-C cable. I used my Samsung fast charger and this thing charged up, I think in about an hour or so. It's only like an 1800 milliamp battery, I think. And yeah, it's only 1800 milliamps. So I double checked that just now <laughs> while it's sitting next to me while recording this. And there's no dimmer switch up here, but the actual settings I will show you in a second. 
So the settings for this are actually on the volume rocker. So if you press the volume rocker in, you can change the backlit display. You can change the size of the screen. You can change the volume. You can change the palette. You can change a whole bunch of settings in here to make it work the way that it's supposed to. Even the actual uh, speed of the emulation or uh, not the emulation, but the gameplay and the GB color fix is actually for Game Boy, Game Boy games. There's some games like Pokemon, for example, that need this to be turned on when you play Game Boy games, but it doesn't need to be turned on for Game Boy Color games on the most part. Now for the speaker, the speaker sounded really good. Now let's take a listen to that speaker. I'm gonna turn the volume all the way up on the device, and this is just using my phone recorder. So let's take a listen to how this sounds. Now, if you remember how the Game Boy Color speaker sounded, or if you have one sitting around, go take a listen to that, because I didn't turn the volume all the way up here, but I did enhance it just so that you can kind of hear it on the actual video audio. But overall, this thing looks like a legitimate Game Boy Color, and the fact that we can charge it, the fact that it has an upgraded battery, it has an upgraded speaker, has upgraded everything, and it looks so cool with the galaxy purple buttons i don't know i like the purple look just because i think the purple looks really clean and it just made the whole experience of this process and this game boy color building experience in 2024 just something different because back in the day we didn't have something like this it was just something that was built by nintendo and you know how they are but that's just my initial kind of process or review, walkthrough, talk about of my experience with this thing. Stay tuned for the guide. When I get the other one in the mail, I will be doing a guide about how to put yours together in a more in-depth video. Take care, guys. I'm going to go play some Pokemon Blue now. Save my game just in case I didn't pick the right Pokemon. And I will see you next time.